The winner of the eBay auction for my origami goat box was Sadia Mohammed, who bid $50,700. Sadly, after winning the auction, Sadia had to suddenly cancel because someone had stolen her phone and used it to place a false bid. Now, I've mentioned the false bidding multiple times. For instance, even on the previous auction, which never finished, Get Working said, Current bid, $32,000, with three days to go. Outstanding. I replied, Lol, my spider sense tells me there's some fake bidding going on. How did I know there were fake bids? Partly because it didn't seem entirely plausible that there were multiple people willing to pay tens of thousands of dollars for some origami, even the finest origami in the world, but mostly because posting fake bids is exactly what I would do if I followed a god who brags about being the best of deceivers and a prophet who said that war is deceit. In other words, if my religion taught me to rely on deception, if my religion taught me to have absolutely no integrity whatsoever when I'm interacting with unbelievers, then if I saw an unbeliever posting the sort of auction we've been posting, I would post fake bids for the sake of my deceptive God and my lying prophet. I would enter into a contract with the unbeliever and then break the contract, just like my lying prophet broke the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. The keyboard jihadis know that if they post massive bids and outbid everyone else, then most real bidders won't be able to bid because the bid is too high. So this is their latest brilliant plan to stop the dizzle from wreaking havoc on their book. Their strategy is to mildly inconvenience me by posting fake bids. I say mildly inconvenience me because if a winning bidder wants to cancel, I can simply accept a previous bid by a lower bidder. It's called the second chance option. I was going to send out my second chance offers today, but eBay once again took down the listing, again claiming that I was offering an unspecified mystery item and again illegally severing dozens of contracts between me and third-party bidders. Obviously, since I told bidders exactly what's in the box, this wasn't a mystery item. Apart from that, a quick search for mystery box on eBay shows that mystery boxes are, in fact, quite welcome. So this seems to be a rule that only applies to the Dizzle. So now we have some teamwork between the keyboard jihadis and the eBay trust and safety team. The keyboard jihadis post fake winning bids in order to stall long enough for the trust and safety team to pretend that I'm violating the policies. Unfortunately for the keyboard jihadis and their allies on the eBay trust and safety team, I anticipated their ruse even before eBay started blocking my auctions. That's why I bought a Porter Cable Drill Press. and a big pile of Qurans. You see, you can't simply tell a keyboard jihadi that he or she is wrong for lying and posting fake bids and then making up stories to back out of an agreement. He or she doesn't believe that lying to unbelievers is wrong. You can only tell a keyboard jihadi to stop lying because there are consequences for lying. The main consequence here is that I'm an artist. Whenever someone lies to me, or breaks an agreement with me, or gives a violent ideology special privileges, I get a burst of creative energy. I just have to create. So whenever a keyboard jihadi wins an auction with a fake bid, or whenever some website enforces Sharia, I'm probably going to end up making a custom holy Quran to illustrate Sheikh Yasser Qadi's claim that there are holes in the narrative. Each special edition Holy Quran will be a completely unique work of art signed by the world's first and only psychopathic Quran artist. So here's the pattern that we're about to see over and over again. I'll make an awesome work of art and put it up for auction or for sale on some site. Keyboard jihadis will place fake bids or get my item removed. I'll respond to their fake bids or their Sharia enforcement by making custom holy Qurans. 
Eventually, they'll realize that the fake bids and hypocrisy only lead to more holy Qurans. But by that time, we will have conclusively demonstrated just how common lying is in Islam. Who wins? We do. Who achieves absolutely nothing? Keyboard jihadis. Now, since I want to get back to apologetics on this channel, my art videos will be hosted on a new Quran artwork channel I'm launching. The channel is called Quran Creations. I haven't uploaded any content yet, but the link is in the description box. You'll definitely want to catch my first video. Yes, I'm about to have an entire channel dedicated exclusively to my Quran creations, Quran agami, Quran paper mache, Quran paintings, and a lot of holy Qurans. Is it possible for one man to post daily apologetics videos while simultaneously pursuing his passion for Quran art? Only one way to find out.